Hey, what's going on y'all? Welcome to Meat Cranium. Today I'm gonna to be doing a brisket on the Oklahoma Joe Bronco. It's gonna be Dutch. Uh, Dutch is a, uh, he's a viewer that's been watching and he actually recently bought himself an Oklahoma Joe Bronco. He comments and uh, me and him have had a lot of going back and forth. I've been giving him my opinion about the Bronco. He finally broke down, he got the Bronco, and he's really happy with it. Anyhow, um, let's get started. This is a small brisket. Okay, there's a little brisket right here. This is an 8.92 pound brisket, a uh, choice. And people are like, oh, why don't you get a prime? Or, oh, why don't you get a Wagyu? You know what? Honestly, the best brisket I've ever made has been a select grade brisket. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the day before. I'm actually gonna cook this tomorrow. I'm gonna let all these seasonings sit on there. And I'm gonna be using the uh, It's Incredible, I mean, the Heaven Made Products, um, Texas Best Brisket Rub. This stuff, it's freaking awesome. I love this stuff. Just trim some of this fat off and just gonna go, you just kinda go through a little bit of, of like what to do with trimming and binder, which the binder is going just gonna be some plain old water. And I'm just gonna trim some of this, some of this fat off and uh, I'm gonna be hanging this brisket. I'm not gonna lay it, uh, I'm not gonna lay it inside the Bronco. This is gonna be hanging down. And I'm also gonna be using uh, for the first time uh, in a longer cook, I'm gonna be using the, uh, the Oklahoma Joe a vertical, um, the vertical charcoal basket mod that I made, which is a, which is a 304 stainless steel bucket that I modified to be a vertical, vertically fed charcoal basket. Anyhow, let's get started. All right, so uh, we're not going to trim a whole lot of the a whole lot of fat off. We're just going to trim some of the fat off on this side, on the meat side. Uh, just going to go through, and uh, when you trim your brisket, make sure your brisket is cold because uh, you don't want to trim, um, you know, warm fat. So we're just gonna go ahead and trim. This is called the deckel. Just wanna dig some of this out a little bit. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. There we go. Gonna keep that, that fat inside there. It's gonna keep the inside moist. Uh, gonna trim some of this fat off right here. Just went down a little bit too far. Now, if this was a competition, you know, you could remove all the silver skin right here, but this isn't a competition, just is backyard stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna trim some of this fat off right here. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, got this piece right here on the on the point. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. It's kind of nasty. Trim that up. Uh, brisket here is a little thin right here. Uh, here's something I like to do uh, with a brisket. Since the grains are running this way and you're going to be slicing it against the grains, what I like to do is just cut off uh, a piece right here. So when it comes time to slice, you kind of already know where to slice at, okay, against it. Then this here can just, uh, you can, I can just throw this in there extra. See this fat going around here? I'm going to slice this all off. Not going to render down, just kind of useless. The fat on the point, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. The fat on the flat on the flat part here, it's already thin enough. I'm not gonna trim none of that. I'm gonna try to keep it much on the flat as I can because as it's cooking, I want this to be you know kind of thick. And so when it cooks, it's gonna be kind of even. See? You want it to have that kind of that that nice, nice uh, smooth, smoothed out, uh, kind of thin area right there. As evenly as possible when it comes to height. Now it's time to put the uh, the binder on. Okay, so bottle just the bottle to play on water, just spray that. Uh, some Texas Best Brisket Rub. Now, I'm not going to season the fat as much as I'm going to season the, the meat part. Alright, so all I'm going to do now is just going to transfer it over into an aluminum pan that has some aluminum foil in it. The reason I have to put aluminum foil is because I reuse these pans a lot and I have some holes in the bottom. You know, juices can actually leak through, so I have to put line the bottom with some aluminum foil. But that's a-okay. All right, there we go. Now we'll put this in the fridge and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Mm. 
Good morning, y'all. Welcome to the next day. So, uh, down inside the Bronco, I have the ring that actually comes with the Bronco that you set your ash pan on. Then you set your coals on top of that, on top of the, the ash pan. Well, I just took uh, I just took the ring, put that there, put aluminum foil down on the bottom to help with uh, cleanup. And then this rack right here that you see, that screen mesh, that's off. That's the uh, charcoal grate out of a Weber kettle. I have a video where I modified. This is a 304 stainless steel bucket. I drilled some holes in the bottom right here so the air is fed here. I drilled some holes right here in the bottom. Then I also got this right here to add so I can put on top so I can add more coals on top. So it's gonna, everything's going to burn from the bottom. You put your fresh coals on, you put your hot coals on bottom, put your fresh coals on top and it's going to burn up. And then uh, that is through to cook. If you need to add more coals, you just add coals on top. The ash filters out through the bottom. So how I'm going to adjust this thing is the brisket's going to hang right here. Uh, I'm going to hook it, I'm going to hang the brisket down here, point down towards the bottom, and uh, the coals are going to be over here on the side. You should be able to use almost all the room that you have on the side of your of your Bronco. If you need to do a 20 hour cook, you could easily do it with a 20 hour cook with this probably. Um, so I'm hoping to go probably maybe uh, 8 hours to 10 hours with this brisket. Going to try to keep the temperatures right around 275, 300, uh, maybe actually between 250 and, and 300. If I can keep it there, I'll be doing pretty good. Now the temp I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using my Inkbird. All right, my Inkbird. I love this thing. Uh, they sent me another one, but it doesn't work. Um, it has like multi-color uh, probes here. I've tried no less than probably 30, 40 times to get it hooked up, and the other one does not work. So I'm not going to even try to show that one. But it has multicolor probes right here. It looks similar to this, but it doesn't work, and uh, it's brand new. But this one works fantastic. Now, I want to check the temperatures of the Bronco right here. On your Bronco, you have one of these uh, these holes. That's what your your bar goes into. This is this is what I do. Okay, so it's set up like this. I take this, all right. I put it down here, where this hole is, because this hole is kind of even. With the, uh, with the with the temp the temp gauge with the Bronco. So uh, what I do is I measure to see how far down the probe is that sticks out of the Bronco. So it goes right there. All right. So I just need to go that far down to measure the temperatures inside the pit. I put this right here. I kind of squeeze it. I stick this right through. I twist it. Then that's then that's that. Okay. Then that's going to monitor the temperatures inside the pit. And I like doing that whenever the pit is cool, so I don't have to you know burn myself or whatever but yeah that's gonna that's gonna keep the the temperatures monitored inside there you can easily shut those lid uh, whenever you do that all right so that's kind of how i got the setup let's get the coals lit and uh, i already have the brisket out um, trying to come up uh, trying to bring the temperature up of it a little bit let's, let's get started Once it starts, you know, you know, burning kind of clean, it's, it's, it's kind of, kind of got everything, you know, working together. I'm gonna shut the lid, and uh, I have the intake on full tail boogie open, and uh, the top here, this here, the one on top, is gonna be full tail boogie open whenever I shut the lid, and then when it gets to the temperature I want, I'm gonna back down the intake. I'll back down that intake to probably about a two to three, and then I'll make incremental adjustments from there. And these, and these Broncos, they hold the temperature really good. Let's look at the brisket. It's been uh, overnight. I've had it out now for probably about 20, 30 minutes. And let's see what it looks like. And let's get the thing hooked up. I wanna show you guys how to daisy chain it so it doesn't like pull off in case it gets like a little bit too tender and it pulls right off the hooks. That'll be okay. There you go. That's good. So it's uh, got some sweating, got some pooling right here, which is what you want to see. So it's sweated out, and uh, some of that moisture is uh, is coming out of it, which you want to see. So I have that have that chunk right there of the uh, of the flat is cut off because the grains run this way. So it comes time to cut. I know they already cut this way right here. Let's uh, go ahead and da daisy chain this thing. 
Uh, so I have uh, two hooks here. Basically, it's going to go like this. Right. Okay. So these two hooks are the different uh, go a different way and they're different size. So I'm going to have to go one way, one way, one way, the other way. So with uh, when you daisy chain something, you kind of want to get it hooking like right here. There we go. There we go. See Daisy Jane. Getting some smoke action over there on the Bronco. That means that those coals and everything are starting to light, which is a good thing. Uh, still kind of like a, a whitish, grayish type of smoke. Can wait for that to clear out. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid. There. And let's start doing this thing. All right, so I got it here. I'm gonna put the, uh, the, the tent probes in. All right, and it's gonna go here in the center of the point, right here. There we go, right there. And this one's gonna go right here in the flats. I need to go about right, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the brisket on. Uh, I just started smoking up a little bit more, but it's all right, that's gonna clear out. All right, shut the lid and let's get, let's get it cooking. All right. Now it's, now the fun begins. All right, y'all, so it's been one hour and uh, just kind of an update, if you can see this or not, but I have the, the inside of the grill is at 279. It's been bouncing around between, you know, 250 and, and, and 270. It's a little high right now, but I just lowered it. So it's at 277. Uh, the flat is at 135 and the point is at 84 degrees but I expect those temperatures to tighten up and right now I'm going to uh, spritz but like unlike my other brisket videos I'm not going to do like every hour spritzing you guys get it uh, at the end I'll show you guys what the consistency of the Bronco did but right now it's uh, you can see it's burning clean you can't even see the smoke that's what you want to see you want to see absolutely nothing or very very thin smoke so it cleared up uh, pretty pretty quickly I'm going to go ahead and spritz it now and uh, see what we got all right, so you can see the brisket. We have a perfect, beautiful color right here. I love this. When you spritz, just you, all you have to do is really on a brisket is just spritz the. Uh, the only thing you really have to spritz is just the uh, the meat side. You don't have to do the, the fat side. Just kind of like leave the fat side alone. Oh, we've got an alarm going off because I, I raised the lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it. The uh, the coals are looking wonderful. It hasn't got to the top yet. Let's go over here and look. So if you look down the side there, it's still creeping up. It's still creeping up right there so it's looking good everything's going according to plan i'll see y'all towards the end of this cook or when i go to wrap it if i wrap it i'm going to go strictly on color today i'm not really going to go on feel uh to wrap i'm going to go on color so all right that's it all right y'all so it has been three hours the current temp inside is at 261 the flat is at 178 and the point is at a 156 i just uh, been spritzing it that's what the that's what it looks like so far that's what brisket looks like so far i want it a little bit darker than that i like it nice and dark but i'm going to be adding some coals to the basket it's been kind of going down i added a a mesquite log there so i'm gonna add a few more coals on top there we go, let it continue to burn. It's been working uh, pretty darn good so far. So three hours in, and I'm probably gonna be wrapping this in probably the next hour I'll be wrapping that. All right, y'all, so it's been four hours. I'm about to wrap this brisket. However, um, the problems I thought I was gonna have with this mod, with that bucket, was I need to put some more holes going around it because the temperature had been kind of diving. I've been kind of fighting the temperatures here for a little bit. So I had to clear out some of the ashes out the bottom. However, it's the temperatures are coming back up. I got a really nice color on this brisket. I'm about to wrap it up and put it and put it onto the grill grates. Um, I usually wrap it up in paper. However, I can't find my paper, so I'm gonna wrap it up in some heavy duty foil. Still looking really good. Um, it's just I'm having some problems with that modification I did with that stainless steel bucket and putting the holes and doing kind of like a gravity fed charcoal basket. Having a few problems there. I just need to add some more holes to it. But uh, other than that, um, everything's going pretty, pretty good. All right, so let's uh, get this thing wrapped up.
All right, so the bark is set on here. It looks really nice. It's starting to get kind of soft. However, it's still, in the, still not perfect yet. Wrap it up nice and tight. Also, I put this uh, brisket on at 9.15 this morning. It is currently 2.50. Uh, it is done. In the flat, we have 2.10, and in the point, I have a 2.01. And right now, it's averaging right around the uh, the mid 2.30s to 2.40s. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, so, I mean, I'm happy with that. Let's get this thing off and get it to a cooler. So just put the brisket into the cooler. If you want to do some uh, some burn ends, uh, just go ahead and slice up the point, put it into a pan, and slice them up into chunks, put it into a pan, some barbecue sauce, put them back onto the smoker, and let that uh, sauce adhere onto them, get them all nice and sticky and gooey. However, I'm not going to do that because this is more or less about the about the uh, the basket and how the basket did um, and the modification for the Oklahoma Joe Bronco. So I kinda already know, so this is about a five and a half hour cook for a nine pound brisket. I'm gonna be cutting this up here probably uh, three, four more hours, but I just kinda wanted to, uh, you know, uh, hit onto that point. All right, y'all, it's been two and a half hours resting. Let's take it out and uh, cut into this bad boy. Now, ideally, you'd want it to rest a lot longer than that. However, we're getting kind of hungry. It's getting near dinner time, and I've got some sides in the oven. It's time to cut it open. Oh, look at that. Look at it, nice and jiggly. See, poking it, jiggly. There's the fat right there. See, that's how you know it's done. It feels almost like jello. That sets it right there, look at that. So that's perfect. As you want to see, you want that jiggle of that. Here's the piece that I cut earlier uh, right here to give me a kind of a guide because the, the fibers are running this way, the strands are running this way, so we're going to cut against the grain. Okay, very tip. Look at that. Now that's a good sign. The very tip is like that. That's a really good sign. Also, some of the barbecue sauce I'm going to use today is going to be Swamp Boys original barbecue sauce. I've used it before; it's pretty good. It's uh, it's uh, uh, some local guys that uh, make this stuff. It's pretty good. Put a little bit of barbecue sauce right there. Absolutely delicious. It's not over smoky. It's the perfect right amount of, of smoke, uh, perfect amount of moisture. Um, yes, I did have a little bit of uh, struggles with the temps because of this uh, modification. However, I'm gonna be able to hone in that modification really good. At the, at the front part, the, the first part of the cook, I averaged between a 250 and 270, and then the back half, I averaged right around 235 to 245 is where I averaged. And there was about an hour there where the temperatures really fluctuated. However, once I got the ashes uh, kind of cleared out, I kind of banged it out, got the ashes cleared out of there, uh, the temperatures came back up and stabilized. You know, it's just all, it's all trial and error. So I'm gonna punch a few more holes around the side, make another layer. I have the one layer of holes going around the side. I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer right above that, probably about an inch above, maybe two inches above around there. And that should take care of my problems uh, trying to keep the temps with the basket modification for the Oklahoma Joe Bronco. Anyhow, uh, like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Ciao.